All right, folks, welcome back to Christosophy, the show where we talk about relevant topics and shine light into the very darkest of places and spaces. This episode is no different. In fact, we're probably cranking it up to 11 as we're going to discuss some very disturbing and dark content. But shine light, we will. Uh, Kids and teens threatening to self-delete over the potential TikTok ban in the United States. We're going to talk about that. Plus, Drake Bell on a new show, Quiet On Set, reveals some shocking and really saddening information about his time as a Nickelodeon actor. So let's get right into it. It's YouTube. Subscribe, click the bell, and like the video so I know you guys are enjoying the content. Let's start off with the Nickelodeon stuff, and I want to give a little bit of context. I myself was a child actor with Nickelodeon, Nick Jr. I played Tyrone on their show, The Backyardigans. I also did some commercials with them as well. Great time, had fun. For the Backyardigans community, something very, very sad happened, and that is that the show creator, Janice Burgess, passed away. I've had I've only had a, a handful of conversations with Janice, but every time I talked to her, she was so full of life and lighthearted and so just happy to be there, full of creative juice. Like it was great. When you hear about some of the things that Drake Bell alleges, I'm so grateful that nothing like that ever got near me uh, during my time with Nickelodeon. And Janice was a big reason for that. So were my parents, and we'll talk about all that a little bit later. But I just want to have a moment of silence for Janice, as I often do on this show for anyone who's passed away, out of respect for human life. Rest in peace, Janice. So, Drake Bell. Everybody knows who this is. Huge Nickelodeon actor, musician. Okay, was in a ton of shows. The Amanda Show, Drake and Josh, etc. ID has a new show called Quiet On Set that dives into the lives of Nickelodeon child actors. And Drake Bell has made headlines for claiming that he was the unnamed minor in a case against Brian Peck, who is now 63. And the case, it was alleging that he had essayed or abused um, Drake Bell when he was 15 years old. The abuse was so bad that it drove him, uh, drove a wedge between him and his family that only pushed him further into the arms of Brian Peck. Now, this isn't speculation. Brian Peck was actually convicted and spent a year in prison over these charges. And so obviously my prayers and my heart goes out to Drake Bell for what he experienced at such a young age. And I want to thank my parents uh, for having such a healthy level of suspicion and concern for me and my safety uh, that none of this stuff really ever got near me. Everybody knows that in Hollywood, there are stage parents. And stage parents often can be willing to do anything to level up their career or their child's career and get them famous. And unfortunately, most of the time that comes at a cost in Hollywood. You have to look the other way when you see things. You have to close your ears when you hear things. And unfortunately, uh, Hollywood, not just Nickelodeon, has had a big issue with children getting abused. You're dealing with very rich, very powerful people, humans. Remember, humans have wicked hearts at their core. And so what's the saying? Power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Power is like like a drug on people's minds. They lose their senses. And so the power that people can be given in Hollywood over kids, over their parents, because they have the ability to make or break careers with just a word. You got the job. Or, sorry, it's not going to work out. We're going in another direction. I'm not so surprised, but I'm a little surprised that more actors don't speak up on this. Um, Even now, you know, Nickelodeon actors and stuff. Again, maybe they genuinely don't have anything to say. Like I said, I don't have personal experience with any kind of abuse during my time at Nickelodeon. But I think it's something that, that needs to be talked about and condemned 
Hollywood wide. And it's just not. And I think a lot of this is due to the fact that if you want to be and stay in Hollywood, I was and am no longer in Hollywood. Why? Because my parents didn't get down with that and I don't get down with that. We don't just look the other way when these things are happening. There were several auditions and parts and things that my parents were like, mm, we're not going to go to this one. You know, you got to this part of town, you're going up into this room, uh, you know, any kind of no parents allowed or we're just going to take the kids over to this. Absolutely. They weren't down for it. OK, um, but sometimes people are willing to take the risk to get their shot at fame. And so, again, to stay in Hollywood, you really do have to toe the party line. You have to rah-rah anything that they support, and you have to condemn anything they condemn, and you have to shut your mouth about things that make them look bad. And this certainly is one of those things. I think Drake Bell, who has also been in his own abuse, had, had allegations of abuse put against him, could what he's claiming here have been the root of a problem? There are many aspects to this. I also want to bring to your attention, because I just want to look at every aspect and shine light. Uh, he released a music video just one day ago called I Kind of Relate. So was this a publicity stunt? Is he capitalizing on some childhood trauma and coinciding a new music release with the release of his show because his name is going to be in the headlines. The video went out a day ago, has over 100,000 views. This is a natural question. I'm not saying this is what happened, but it's a natural question. It's kind of an elephant in the room. Uh, I already said earlier in the show that my prayers and my heart goes out to him and to his family for everything that they had to endure via the abuse of Brian Peck. So it's not that there's no sympathy there, but I think that the Hollywood thing and part of the corrupting force of Hollywood is that there's no such thing as bad publicity. And you really should take the opportunity to capitalize even on your own childhood trauma. So it's a question to ask. I don't know. I don't know the guy. I don't know his heart. But um, what I've learned during my time in Hollywood is that there are rarely such things as coincidences. So, uh, again, my time at Nickelodeon was amazing. I had a great cast, a ton of people who loved kids and loved protecting kids. And there was never even the thought or the whiff of anything sinister going on behind the scenes. And I don't know of any of the other people who were with me, whether LaShawn or uh, Jonah, any of them who uh, went through anything like that, to my knowledge, none of that happened. So thankful for the backyard against. Thank you for my time. Thankful for my time uh, with Nick Jr. But this is something serious that has to be addressed. And kudos to ID for, you know, putting on a show like this and getting it out there. I'm pretty sure you're going to see a follow up with the Disney kids, right? Because we run in the same circles often. And so a lot of the same people are behind closed doors making the same deals for Nick and Disney actors and 360 deals, all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's that story. Let me know what you think down in the comments below about each facet of of this whole situation. And from there, I want to get to TikTok, right? The largest vertical scrolling social media platform in the world, 170 million users in the United States alone. In fact, the United States is TikTok's largest audience. The House of Representatives passed a bill with widespread bipartisan support, 352 yays to only 65 nays, to pass a bill that could potentially end TikTok in the United States. Now, there are a few things that have to happen in order for that to happen. Obviously, it goes now to the Senate. The Senate has to pass it. Biden did say, though, that if it gets to his desk, he's going to sign it. And what happens then? Well, TikTok wouldn't immediately be banned. Uh, but ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok, would then have six months to sell the platform to a non-threatening, non-hostile entity or maybe an American company or something like that. So there's a lot going on here. 
using a lot going on hands, but we're going to break it all down. Um, now, if that ban happens, it's not like uh, TikTok would be deleted off of every phone in the United States. It would just be that you could not download it anymore from any store, Google Play, Android Store, Apple iTunes Store, uh, App Store. Why do I say iTunes Store? That's so dated. You wouldn't be able to download it. You wouldn't be able to update it. And so eventually it would just become a dinosaur or a relic. Okay, so like with any argument, there are two sides to this. The people who want TikTok banned are the people saying that TikTok is using and storing and selling Americans' private and personal data and using it to tamper with Americans' lives. It could lead to uh, identity theft and all different kinds of things, okay? The people who want TikTok to stay are the folks saying TikTok is a powerful platform for free speech, just like Twitter or X. A lot of ideas can get out there. A lot of small businesses run their businesses via TikTok, okay, with engaging, great, quick videos. TikTok kind of turns everybody into an advertiser, though, because they're short-form videos. Where have we seen this before? Ads on TV that we all used to hate. But now with TikTok, it's great, and we love it. And you can learn a lot on TikTok. A lot of people do. A lot of young people are learning a lot about history, their own and world history for that matter. And so with these two sides, which side do I fall on? I, I really think that it's a band-aid on a bullet hole type of situation. TikTok is not the only, nor do I think it's the greatest threat to cybersecurity in the United States for Americans and their personal information. There are plenty of other platforms. In fact, even American companies, um, Instagram, Facebook, they have been known to misuse their, their users' data, even potentially selling it to foreign entities, right? So this stuff is happening anyway. And certainly Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, all of those combined do some serious damage too if they were to abuse that kind of information. So why are you picking on TikTok alone? Well, I think that the powers that be recognize and understand that TikTok also represents information that is not controlled by mainstream Hollywood, okay? TikTok, much like X, formerly known as Twitter, can control narratives in a way that only traditional media in Hollywood used to have. And so it's a threat to the narrative. And so where this bill sees so much widespread bipartisan support, again, 352 yay to only 65 nay, I believe it was. The reason that it has this is they can go to the Republicans and say, look, we're protecting Americans' data, cybersecurity, China's bad, and they're using your information to steal your identity. Republicans go, rah, rah, we support. Then they can go to the Democrats and say, look, we can ban TikTok and we can stop all the disinformation and the fa false and fake news, misinformation, conspiracy theories, all that stuff that pops up on the internet and takes over the minds of young people. And the Democrats on the left say, rah, rah, we support. So that's where all that support comes from. But I think ultimately, it will do nothing for either of those things. You see, if TikTok is banned, there will be another TikTok. It'll be an American-made company. The formula for TikTok works, so it's going to be used in the United States. Maybe even Elon Musk will seize this opportunity to create a spinoff of X. X Talk or something. I don't know. That was a bad name. Where people can do the same thing, interact in the same way. So the TikTok formula isn't going anywhere. TikTok itself, maybe. But then you get all these weird things and shady backroom deals. Like, if ByteDance is really that concerned, they could just buy an American company and, like, use that American company to buy TikTok from themselves. And obviously, they'd have to do this in a once-removed, twice-removed, third-removed kind of way. But the money will still end up flowing in the same place. And thus, the access to certain data. Like, how do you even know? that China can't get their hands on this data, as we've seen vulnerabilities with even American social media platforms. Okay, so it gets into the weeds all there, but that's, in a nutshell, what's going on with TikTok, what could potentially happen to TikTok, and why kids are threatening to self-delete. This is the problem. Cybersecurity is not the number one priority for young people. And when it comes to that, 
versus their fame, popularity, entertainment, even for small businesses, their business. Well, those things come first. And it's really foolish, in my opinion, because if you lose your identity or your information is not secure, then guess what? Somebody can hack your profile and put up all kinds of stuff you don't like. They could take your bank account information and take all the money you earn from your content, right? So we really need to prioritize cybersecurity just on that level alone. Not saying that TikTok is the main or the worst offender, but kids really need to value cybersecurity over all those other things. There was a video that went viral. I may put the video up down below uh, where this girl, this mom was videoing her daughter saying that she bought a pair of Lululemon leggings uh, for some steep discount or whatever. And the website only asked for her uh, card number, I believe, and, uh, oh, I think social security number. And she gave them her social. And she says, yeah, well, you know, the leggings haven't, they haven't gotten here yet, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll be here soon. Young Americans have a detachment from their own privacy and security. And so that... I think is uh, worth a video on its own. But with that being said, let me know what you think about everything we talked about down in the comments below. I love chatting it up with you guys as always. And it's YouTube. So subscribe, like, and click the bell so that you don't miss when I drop more videos just like this, shining light into the very darkest of places and spaces. I'll see you in the next one.